SSDI and SSI. The surprising announcement I want to share with you right here in the video. Let's get into it and discuss what's going on. I right, know in this video I do want to share with you an announcement in regards to SSDI and SSI which encompasses about 17 million beneficiaries, about 8 million SSI beneficiaries and about 8.9 million SSDI beneficiaries, 17 million people in total. Now let's quickly talk about what the premise is behind these two programs. To send out ongoing monthly checks for those individuals who have a disability because they are unable to engage in the workforce at the capacity that they either want to or that they need to in order to financially sustain themselves. Therefore, they can enroll in these programs and start getting ongoing monthly checks as you probably know because I'm guessing if you're somebody watching this video, you're probably a beneficiary of one of these two programs. Also, with the exception of SSI, which also sends out ongoing monthly checks to those individuals aged 65 or older who have limited income and limited resources. However, in this video, I do want to share with you the details of this announcement, which illustrates just how much these programs are falling behind, just how much these programs are failing beneficiaries in a major way, and some major changes that need to be taken for these programs. So let's get into it and talk through these details because these are some pretty big and surprising numbers. All right, now get this. The report goes all the way back to the year 1998. So what is that, 25 years ago or so? Right around there. So actually, yeah, about 25 years ago. So here's what it comes down to. In the year 1998, 33% of beneficiaries who were actually eligible for one of these two programs, as in receiving benefits, was actually receiving benefits. Now, basically what that means is 67% of people out there who are either over the age of 65 because they have limited income or limited resources or under the age of 65 and who have a disability unable to engage in the workforce at the capacity that they want to, were actually receiving benefits from one of these two programs. Only 33% of people, in other words, 67% uh, of people that were probably eligible were not getting benefits. This was back in 1998. That's a lot of people, right? So one third of the people that should have been getting benefits were only receiving benefits. Wow, right? Now get this. If we fast forward all the way out until the year 2016, so what is that, 18 years later? 18 years later, in the year of 2016, 47% of people who were eligible for benefits were actually getting them. So not a bad improvement, right? It increased by 14% over that 18 years, where now 47% of people that are eligible for these benefits were now getting them. But that also means 53% of people who were actually eligible for the benefits we're not getting them, right? For some unknown reason why they were not getting them? Well, that's a good question I think all of us need to be asking, which is why are they not getting them? If they're eligible for them, if they have a legitimate disability or you know not able to work at the capacity that they were, why were they not getting benefits? Good question. Not sure if we have that answer right now, but that is something I certainly want to dig into because I'm curious why were these beneficiaries not getting benefits when they should have been, right? However, now let's bring this up to present time. Right now, 2023, okay? Here's what it stands at right now, 53%. So not much of an improvement over the last, what is that, 2018 to 2000, uh, 2023? Was that five years? So in five years time, it increased by so what is that, 6%? So not a much of an improvement, but at least it is somewhat of an improvement, okay? So that also means that 53% of beneficiaries who are eligible for these benefits or should be eligible for them because of a legitimate disability are actually getting benefits. Meanwhile, 47% of people out there that should be getting these benefits are not getting them, again, for some unknown reason, right? So at least they're making improvements here, but you can clearly see from the year 1998 until now, 25 years of time, basically it went from 33% of people that were eligible getting benefits up to 53%, an increase of 20%. But again, why is it not like 80 or 90 or even 100%? If somebody's eligible for the benefits, why are they not getting them, right? Does anybody have that answer? Right, so anyway, some surprising stuff, however, I'm not done yet. <laughs> There's more numbers to come, okay? Get this. The report also goes on to show 20% of SSDI beneficiaries currently receiving benefits. Remember, I said earlier in the video, 8.9 million people are receiving SSDI benefits right now. Now, obviously, give or take a little bit, but it's about 8.9 million people currently receiving SSDI, Social Security Disability Insurance Benefits, okay? So, uh, of those 8.9 million people, about 20% of them are living in poverty, okay? So that's about, what is that? A 1.8 million people? Is that right? I think that's right, if my math is correct on that. Yeah, about 1.8 million people 
of these uh, of the 8.9 million people receiving SSDI are living in poverty, according to this report. It's a lot of people. Why? I think a lot of us need to ask that question now is why? We've heard it before out of the administration. We've heard it before out of many people in Congress. No older adults or people with disabilities should ever need to live in poverty in America. Okay, well, that's 1.8 million right there, according to this report. Now, get this. The report also goes on to show that of the SSI beneficiaries, supplemental security income, right now, in present time, 2023, there's 54% of SSI beneficiaries that are currently living in poverty. Again, that means that's a huge percentage of people on SSI living in poverty. However, let me throw this out there really quickly because this is a little bit of a head scratcher, okay? Think of it this way. As an SSI beneficiary, you can get up to $914 per month right now as an individual receiving SSI in 2023, right? However, the federal poverty line, as we've talked about before in other videos here on the channel, is $14,580 a month or $1,215 on a monthly basis. Okay, if somebody's receiving 914 from SSI, that is about $300 less than the federal poverty line on a monthly basis. Let me ask you, as an SSI beneficiary, do they allow you to earn $300 a month? We all know the answer to that. No. Well, you can, but I'm just going to tell you this much. If you earn $300 a month right now as an SSI beneficiary, your benefits, you might as well kiss them goodbye because they're not going to be around much longer, okay? I think we all know this. And again, a major downfall of the SSI program, don't get me wrong, SSI is great. It's a great program helping out a lot of people, about 8 million people every single month. But you can clearly see the, pro, uh, the program is kind of broken because it does not allow people to essentially earn anything. You can have a teeny, teeny, tiny bit of income as an SSI beneficiary before they start garnishing or completely stop your benefits. In fact, you probably know this, but let me throw this out there really quickly. If you were to even get a bag of groceries from a friend, a family member, a neighbor, anybody like that, you're supposed to report that. Really? Who's going to report that? I mean, let's just be real right now, okay? <laughs> I'm not saying that you shouldn't. We got to do everything that's ethical and that's right. I'm just simply saying, are you kidding me right now? That is so out of date. If somebody wants to help somebody with a bag of groceries, seriously, we're supposed to report that? I mean, you've got to be kidding me right now, right? That's just like really, really strict. And honestly, that's like micromanaging at the most extremes, right? Like, give me a break, right? People are just looking for a little bit of help right now. If somebody wants, if I want to give you a bag of groceries, leave us alone, right? I want to give you some groceries. We want to help everybody out. So why would that be reported? And why would that even need to be reported in the first place? That's nuts, right? So anyway, my point is you can clearly see how strict the SSI program is. But if you're one of the, S, uh, one of the 8 million SSI beneficiaries, you know what I'm talking about. You know the rules on this stuff, right? You can have like virtually no income as an SSI beneficiary. So how are they coming up with this 54% figure saying 54% of SSI beneficiaries are living in poverty? And according to my estimations and according to my calculations, wouldn't it technically be 100% of SSI beneficiaries living in poverty based on monthly benefit amounts, based on the amount of money that they allow you to have in your possession? By the way, $2,000 as an individual, $3,000 as a married couple in your possession before they start garnishing your benefit or basically reducing your benefit because now you have too much money. Again, um, and also you can't have any income above and beyond your benefit other than a few dollars, right? So I don't know. I'm not really sure how they come up with this 54% figure, but in my estimation, it would seem to be a lot higher than that, probably right around that 100%. And then for when it comes to SSDI, only 20% is what they're claiming that are living in poverty. Again, I don't know the actual number. That's just what they're telling us in this report. So we have to believe that, or at least, you know, give it some credit. But I would say, based on what I see down below in the comment section, I would not be shocked if that number is higher, like 35, 40, even maybe even 50% for SSDI beneficiaries. So, which by the way, quick side note, the average SSDI benefit right now is just under $1,500 is what they've told us, okay, in 2023. That's what they're saying for SSDI. I... I don't know anybody that's receiving SSDI getting uh, $1,500 a month. So anyway, which by the way, please don't leave your benefit amount down below. That's not my business. I don't want to know that. That's that's not what I'm asking for here, okay? So that's your personal information. Please keep that private. Um, other than that, this is the detail of this announcement that I wanted to bring to your attention here. You can clearly see these programs are great. SSDI, SSI, sending out monthly benefits to about 17 million people, but they're also kind of broken at the same time. And you can clearly see that based on this report and all of these statistics right here. 
And again, would it really take Congress that much effort to fix this up? The answer is no, not really. It would not take Congress that much work if they wanted to fix these programs up and actually change them in a major way for current beneficiaries as well as future beneficiaries. It would not take that much effort and realistically, it wouldn't even cost that much money. It's only, it's 17 million people, okay? If you had to boost benefits by a couple hundred dollars a month, it would not even be that much money, all right? A few billion dollars a year, it's nothing when it comes down to the federal government. Anyway, hope this one helps you. Again, I wanna keep you updated with everything going on right now. Please make sure to subscribe down below if you haven't done so yet. Share the video with your friends, family, social media, and go back and check out any of the other thousands of videos here on the channel. Until next time, enjoy your day, take care, have, have a good one, and I'll catch you again later.